Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about how you can inject DB context into action filters. In ace.net core, we can use action filters to manage cross-cutting concerns. Like if you want to do logging or exception handling uh, or anything that uh, could be used in multiple actions uh, is, the, um, is a candidate for uh, being an action filter you can search about action filters on the web there are plenty of resources about that but uh, the problem is sometimes we want to have our db context inside an action filter uh, so that uh, we could change database during the uh, action filter running and this is what i'm going to talk about today so let's see uh, the demo project So I have a simple blog system and what I want to do is when a user comes here and clicks on details, uh, I want to count the number of times each post is being viewed. Of course, in a real project, uh, this is a link in a website in, in the main page and user clicks on the post and views the post, uh, but you are not, not going to be concerned about the UI design and that part of the project. Uh, suppose there's something like a landing page and you're going to click on pictures or links and with a description and then uh, the detail page is going to be showed to the user. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, with uh, each time this details page is being shown to the user, I want to and count it and add uh, this its value on database. So there are a couple of filters that you can use inside your MVC projects. I am going to build a result filter and you can see that a result filter runs before and after a result being generated in your ASP.NET Core project. So I have my details page here and inside I have an on get method and this is creating a result for us which is the page user sees and uh, I want to create a result filter to run some code after the result is ready uh, so that I can count a number of hits for each post. I think it's a good place to put the um, statistics because um, I'm kind of sure that everything went fine. There were no problem uh, to page being rendered and the page is actually ready for the user to see. So uh, we can actually count that as a hit, but also maybe you would have different solution like uh, you could have uh, an ajax call inside this page and use javascript to asynchronously count the page hits and that's a good idea maybe a better one but we want to uh, keep everything on the back end and uh, work with c sharp uh, and of course this is a demo project i want i just want to show you how you can inject db context I'm sure that you could find different use cases for this scenario. So let's go on. So typically uh, you would create your filters inside different folder, but let's come here and create a public class and call it hit counter attribute and let's inherit from result filter attribute so I need to add using and now I can override some methods inside this attribute so now let's override some methods 
and I want to change the unresolved execution async because we are using a database uh, it's better to use async methods and this is how you basically use the async part you need to await for the next let's add async and use await next and any code that you write in here runs before the result gets generated and any code that uh, you write here runs after so if I have something like this and something like this and I set a breakpoint then uh, I can use hit counter attribute on my details page also let's add the filter here hit counter and uh, let's put a breakpoint here so this attribute makes sure that our result filter runs before or after any results being generated in this page so let's run the project in attribute in debugging mode and see the result so let's log in and I go to details and you can see that um, the page is running and now we get to this part and now we await when next runs your page gets generated and result gets ready and after is, that is done he comes back to this place and goes to this line so uh, you are managing two parts of the event before and after in the same method here and I continue and now my page is visible to the user so what I want to do is to skip this part I don't want the before part and I want to add some code here so that I could change uh, its value in my database it's exactly like you think we can add private read only application db context here and let's call it db and i'm using visual studio to generate the constructor for me but obviously you can do that on your own and um, now let's find the id for now i make it just one i fix it later so let's find the post with the id and i can use async because i am inside an async method and that would be the, that would be the post for us so let's add one number to our hits and then let's save it in a synchronous way wait and so that's it that's all we have to do but the problem is right now i am con just uh, considering that the id is always one that's not true and we need to find a way to find the id of current post inside our result filter so if i go to my action or my method here i need to somehow pass this id to 
and this result filter and you can do that by using HTTP context items and add and I call it ID and the value is ID so items is like a package that we can send inside the pipeline and uh, it, it is inside um, middleware's also in uh, different um, filters it's available everywhere inside the pipeline so if you want to uh, send data or message or anything and that is available for the whole request uh, process and you can use items and next uh, i can come here and use this context here to go to http context items and um, find id it's it would be ob um, object so you can parse it using in parse and that's it you can use two string here so you could parse it and that's it that's all you had to do but there is a problem the heat counter is not available now because it has a constructor and you cannot use uh, or inject any data any object inside this inside this constructor like you normally do because it's, it's an attribute so how we can fix the problem we can use type filter and use type of and like this it's available to us and you need to use the full name this time the full class name should be used unlike before that we could use just uh, this part so uh, that's how you inject everything inside an action filter that's it let's run the project again and see if it's working so its value is zero let's click on details and back to the list and we have one and we have two and here also and everything works just fine so uh, we are done and we could inject a db context into a result filter and inject the attribute and using type filter and that's it that's uh, what i want to do and you could uh, see that we can pass data using HTTP context but also you can uh, use this context here to look for root values or query strings if you need to uh, let's see that we have our HTTP context here we have query strings here so if you want to somehow extract the value of current post uh, current id value you can use query string because we have query string here also you can use routing and add route value like this and if you have route value you can use uh, HTTP context or context route data values of id something like that and find the id in this way but i prefer using items because it's more solid and you can manage it a lot easier and so that's it for today and thanks for watching and please like share and subscribe